of the them is something happened, says Allah to us, something very strange which we would have not known. Badat lahuma. Badat lahuma sawatuna. In other words, both there, both of them, their private parts were made exposed to them. Badat were made apparent to them. In other words, they were in some state, Allah knows what that was, it seems to me, Allah Ta'ala, in which they were either unconscious or unaware or covered properly or somehow not to see directly their own aura, their own and that of the other side. Again. Committing of them exposed what? The aura the deficiency, the point of weakness, the weakness. Because the awra also in the Arabic language of the meaning of it is the point of weakness of a person, is my awra. When we commit a dhamm, subhanAllah, what happens? Our weakness is exposed. In ways many of us, or most of us, don't reflect on, don't know, don't ponder, don't look for, and we will 
always pay consequences. Whether we realize our weakness or we don't, as a consequence of them, when we will be, we will be uh, come upon from that weakness every time we sin. And Allah Azawajal told them after that, when that happened, they began to repent to Allah Azawajal immediately. They repent to Allah Azawajal immediately. And therefore, a mu'min, a mu'min should be, if, with this condition, with this characteristic, if he or she, under weakness or forgetfulness or jahal or jahala, commits them, he or she should be immediately a quality of a mu'min is that he sins rarely and with difficulties, but he or she repents quickly. Quickly. Does not, you know, does not uh, argue, does not uh, legitimate or legitimize or uh, find excuses as most of us and many of us do when we commit the minor or major. We have enough thick, big nafs, and we begin to, to find excuses. And we rarely, many of us, rarely expla explain, express, I'm sorry, the expression of forgive me, pardon me, excuse me, please forgive me. We find it hard to do that. Many of us find it hard to do that. Even though we violated the norms of Allah or the norms of other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the mu'min quickly repents to Allah Azza wa Jal. And he or she, because in his or her qalb, realizes the ugliness of sin. So he's not going to hide that. In other words, covering a sin, not uh, asking for forgiveness for a sin or for a wrong, is much, much worse than the pride inside the nafs. And then we don't ask for forgiveness. Again, I repeat, my dear brothers and sisters, may Allah forgive me and you. The quality of mu'min is he quickly, quickly repents, quickly asks for forgiveness, and does not feel arrogant against doing that, especially in relationships with other creatures as well. So when that happened to them, says Allah to them, haven't I told you? Does it sound familiar? SubhanAllah, it's like he's it's like now. The story of Adam and Awa is the story of each one of us, you and me, everyone. Haven't I told you? Haven't I told you not to do that? Well, you told them, haven't I told you not to touch that tree? To you and me, haven't I told you? Through Allah, through Rasulullah, through the ulama, through the awliya, through what you read, through your experience, through your time, haven't I told you? And this is haram, this is haram. Don't use riba. Don't take intoxicant. Don't commit zina. Don't look at haram. Don't trade in haram. Don't cheat. Don't lie. Don't backbite. Don't be rude. Don't be arrogant. That's the tree. Haven't I told you not to do that? And haven't I told you that shaitan is an avowed enemy to you? He tells Adam and Hawa, haven't I told you also that shaitan is an avowed enemy to both of you? And that's your story and mine. Haven't I told you? So remember that when we read this and we reflect that upon ourselves. I think we should do that alone and we should cry. And we should weep. And we should repent to Allah Azza wa Jal. And we should seek His forgiveness. And we should express our weakness. 
our, our inability, our inability to stop sinning, and our arrogance, and our horror against sins of many types. There are major sins, and minor sins, and so on. And sin for someone might not be a sin for someone else, but it is a sin for someone. Hasanatu as-salihin, sayyatu al-muqarrabin. As it is said, for the wali min awliya Allah, his or her sin for us seems no sin or even as you know, a good act. Keep that in mind. We should always, if Allah is protecting us from major sins, we should ask Allah to help us be aware of minor sins. And if Allah is protecting us from some minor sins, we ask Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us aware of and protect us from other minor sins that we might not be aware of or we have not yet repented to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala for. And thus after that he says subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing all children of Adam, Ya Bani Adam, Qad anzalna alaykum libasan yuwari sawatukum wayishan wa libasu taqwa dhalika khayyam O children of Adam, O sons of Adam, O daughters of Adam we have sent down upon you garments clothes, garments, and feathers, and the garments of taqwa, and that is virtuous, that is good, that is better. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down for the human being means by which to cover <coughs> our physical aura, to wear clothes. A human being, a civilized human being, a conscious human being, a free human being wears clothes. A primitive person, an uncivilized person, truly uncivilized in spirit, truly uncivilized in heart, is a person who doesn't wear clothes and exposes his aura. But he has been that as Shaitan wants them to do, as he did to the parents. And he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the garment of taqwa, an internal garment, the garment of our consciousness, to be aware always in taqwa of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Are you with me? To be aware and conscious and watchful. I don't know whether these words help you, they help me. Watchful of the fact that Allah watches inside of you and me. To be always like that. That's the garment of taqwa. And he says, this is even better. And what shaitan wants is to remove both clothes to remove from you and me the external clothes and the internal clothes. And removing the internal garment will lead me to remove my external garment. And removing my external garment will lead me to remove my internal garment, my hala. My hala. Ya ya bani adama, la yaftina lakum shaytan kama akharaja abawaykum min al-jannati yanzi'u anhuma and that's what he said to us finally don't be like your parents don't allow shaitan to remove from both of you your garment the internal garment and the external garment under all circumstances the internal garment my dear brothers and sisters in every aspect when we are alone when we are in public, when we are in domestic, when we are at home, when we are at work, when we are at school, when we are in the streets. Under all circumstances, don't give up. May Allah help me and you. Don't give up your clothes, your garment, your taqwa, your internal garment, in your relationship with your wife, 
with your husband, with your children, with your neighbors, with your friends, with your co-workers, <coughs> in the street, in anger, in quietness, under all circumstances, keep your garment. Don't allow it to be taken from you. May Allah Azzawajal help me and you keep both our garments, the internal and the external garments. Allahumma ja'alna min al-ladheena istami'oon al-qawla fa'ittabi'oon ahsala. Sallallahumma wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa al-lameen.